name is Juan Rodriguez. I am I'm 21 years old. I was born in Bogota, Colombia, and migrated to the United States when I was six years old uh, with my dad. And uh, we just recently got back from Arizona. We after we finished the walk, uh, the trail from Miami to Washington D.C. Uh, we knew at, just as we were arriving in D.C. we we saw that the SB 1070 had been signed into law, and it's going to be t going into effect on July 29th. And you know, just like the rest of the country, we were very vigilant about the situation in Arizona. Arizona is being seen as kind of like ground zero for immigration issues in this country. And, um, and we also see that the policies being implemented there are often being used as a model for other regions all across the country. Uh, right after SB 1070 was signed, uh, there were several other states that created copies of the bill and, and have are I either introducing or in the process of trying to pass legislation that is similar to SB 1070. And um, aside from the statewide level, we continue to see 287G agreements at the county level where there is partnerships between uh, local police officials and immigration to detain and deport individuals, um, immigrants, and also to the Secure Communities Program uh, at the jails, which also, you know, is, is creating a, a sense of terror and, and um, it's not making our communities any more secure. So honestly, we went to Arizona because we knew that uh, action has to be taken there. And the, in order to, to stop this domino effect across our country, uh, all of us have to pay attention to, to what, what's happening in, in counties like Maricopa. Um, and so, Uh, en español, eh, mi nombre es Juan Rodríguez, yo emigré de, los, de Colombia cuando tenía seis años y al final de nuestra caminata de Miami a Washington decidimos ir a Arizona porque vemos que Arizona ahora es como el centro de este debate para, para la, una reforma migratoria con tantos uh, abusos que pasan allá, el, el perfil racial y, y la discriminación que se ve cada día y de verdad no vemos ninguna diferencia entre eh, leyes como SB 1070, los programas 287G en los condados donde oficiales locales eh, trabajan con agentes de migración para detener y deportar eh, miembros de nuestras familias, estudiantes, personas que están contribuyendo a nuestra sociedad. Y, y también el programa de, de seguridad, eh, comunidades seguras que de verdad no, no nos trae ningún tipo de seguridad porque está separando eh, niños de sus padres y, y queremos que estos programas paren. El día que se firmó SB 1070, eh, otros estados empezaron a, a, a empujar legislación de la misma manera y en, en nuestro estado, en la Florida, eh, se vieron seis condados más que, que implementaron eh, comunidades seguras. Entonces, estamos opuestos a, 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 es, a esta eh, póliza que tiene la administración y, y, y el gobierno en este país en contra de los inmigrantes. Eh, con tanta criminalización y sin, sin ningún eh, camino hacia la ciudadanía, sin ninguna reforma. Entonces eso es lo que queremos, queremos eh, que el, el presidente tome acción para, para parar deportaciones y para eh, asegurar el futuro de los estudiantes. Y también queremos que el Congreso eh, no deje que esta situación se ponga peor de lo que está ahora y que eh, tome la, las acciones necesarias para asegurarse que una reforma mueve, se mueva hacia adelante. So now I'd like to introduce to you Gabby Pacheco. Uh, she's 25 years old, one of my best friends, <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, a walker, uh, a walker for justice. I think that if we talk about um, what we've been doing for the past five months, uh, it's really something that a lot of people don't feel they have the power to do. And unfortunately, um, we, it has taken us a long time to stand up to our leaders. And that's exactly what we're doing today. That's exactly what we're going to be doing tomorrow. And what we hope that more people are able to do. When we said that we were going to hold President Obama accountable to his promises. We meant it. 
And I think that we cannot forget that there was a lot of people and a lot of young people, a lot of Latino people that went out there, galvanized support for him, registered people to vote. Just in our county, in the state of Florida, we won uh, uh, the state for Obama. We went out there and did the registrations. We had a huge campaign called Vote For Me. Uh, as a coalition, we were able to get 70,000 new voters uh, and people to go out to vote. That's huge. And so we want to make sure that every single one of those people um, is being taken into account. Uh, as we walked, there was a lot of people we met, and I think that when, when we were going before the walk and we were talking about this, we didn't know the level of severity that our country was in. Um, it's not to exaggerate or it's not to um, you know, lie, but in every single town that we went through, from Miami all the way to Washington, D.C., we met somebody that was undocumented, somebody that didn't have papers. Um, you know, we need the administration to take responsibility for this. You cannot hide the sun with one finger. That's just impossible. And doing nothing, it's not really gonna make the situation any better. Uh, before going to Arizona, we had the opportunity to be in a panel uh, with Nora Sandigo. And Nora Sandigo is a person that has been working in the movement since she was 19 years old. Currently under her, she has 800 children that she's um, it's it's kind of like she's a parent to. And those 800 children have been orphaned because their parents have been detained and deported to other countries. Where are the rights of those children? Where are the, you know, the well-being of our communities? Where is the thought being through, put throughout when we are deporting and sending back parents and leaving their children without their families? In Arizona, we also had the opportunity to meet children that are being left behind, uh, orphaned. There was a young child that broke my heart. Um, she was able to find out or actually know that her parents were detained. When she came home from school, her grandmother was watching the news. She was sitting there and she saw how her parents were being detained in one of Jura Pio's famous sweeps. And even though the 287G program has been stripped away from him. The day that we were there in Arizona and we said we were gonna meet with him, he tweeted about us. And he said that, uh, you know, uh, let's see if these so-called self-proclaimed uh, illegals are gonna come and see. And after we met with him, the day after, he put in his Twitter account, uh, we're gonna try to see, you know, I'm, I'm planning on how do we create this immigration sweeps again for illegals. This is something that he's doing out in the open. We're hearing that he's trying to do 10 cities. We're hearing and, and we're not doing anything about it. You know, it's like, it's, it's clearer than water and yet our president, our administration is not taking into account, they're not taking the leadership. Uh, lastly, the reason why we are asking President Obama to take leadership, to do this executive action. He doesn't need Congress for this. He doesn't need um, to, to ask for permission. He could do it, he has the power to do it. To stop the deportations of students like ourselves, talents that is being wasted, talent that is being deported. There was a, a Emmy, um, a student that we work for, uh, trying to get her out of detention. She was in detention for 22 months. This was a girl that she was 19 years old. She turned 20 and 21 inside a detention center. This is unacceptable. And so tomorrow we are going to be, you know, making sure that we tell these stories to the administration, that we put a face to the issue, because I think that for too long we've been seeing this as numbers. And we forget that there's human beings that are suffering. We're forgetting that these are families. We're forgetting that these people actually have rights and that even though they want to call them illegals, undocumented, whatever, whatever they want to say, where they're still human beings and they still have rights and we need to recognize them. And so I, you know, I ask all of you to please help us, you know, even though you think you might not be able to do something, you know, sending a letter to President Obama saying you need to take action, talking to your legislator saying you need to take action. We cannot stay quiet. We cannot stand by the, the, the wayside while we're seeing children suffering and students like ourselves being sent to countries that we don't know.
Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Powerful, right? I hear it. <laughs> so uh, right now, I'm going to introduce Carlos Roa. He also walked from Miami to Washington, D.C. He came when he was only two years old. He's 22 now. Um, and that, to me, is a perfect example of how broken this immigration system is. A person who lived here for 20 years, 18 of those years in Florida, he still pays out-of-state fees. And they call him a non-resident of Florida. So here, here's Carlos for you. Thank you, Felipe. Um, well, as I stand here before all of you, uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us here at, at this event. Um, well, um, I feel very privileged to be standing here uh, because students such as myself, uh, youth that is considered to be undocumented, uh, we do not have the opportunities to have a voice in this country. We really are, are shunned in society. And so I, I feel um, very humbled and, and very privileged to be able to speak on, on the students' on the, the students' of behalf. Um, at, you know, as being a student that has lived here for 20, 20 years in this country, I'm still undocumented, as Felipe had mentioned. Um, well, basically, uh, students such as ourselves are, are continuing on uh, across the country uh, to reclaim our humanity, because basically it, it has been uh, we, we've become we become isolated in society. We do not have voice. We do not have a voice. Uh, Congress continues on to bicker um, whether or not will they will continue on. You know whether they will uh, pass a Dream Act. Whether you know whatever whether they will pass any immigration reform this year. And we continue to see the administration uh, continue to uh, separate our families and be even worse than the previous administration. And so uh, for that reason, we, you know, we decided to, do, to embark on this walk because we only saw things uh, get worse, as uh, my colleagues uh, mentioned. And so uh, tomorrow, uh, we will be meeting with Valerie Jarrett from the White House. Uh, we have, uh, we, we, that is the reason why we decided to walk, was because uh, we needed to uh, talk face to face with these uh, representatives of, of our government because uh, they do not necessarily know what's going on. They do not acknowledge the fact that uh, there, there's, continu there's families that are continuing not to get separated, uh, that uh, they, it's, it seems as almost as if it, they don't really mind. And so because of that, we, you know, we decided to walk it and that's why uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll be having this meeting uh, with Valerie Jarrett. Uh, and so Basically, uh, that's pretty much what we'll be doing. And in español, uh, mañana, mañana vamos a encontrarnos con uh, la señora Valerie Jarrett de parte de la Casa Blanca. Eh, nosotros vamos a hablar con ella como eh, estudiantes que son indocumentados. Eh, esta es la segunda vez que hablamos con ella. Y vamos a estar hablando eh, sobre las deportaciones y, y sobre la eh, separación de las familias. Um, Eh, eh, nosotros vamos a recibir una respuesta de parte de, de la administración eh, si van a eh, si van a pasar una orden ejecutiva eh, parando las deportaciones y las separaciones eh, la deportación de estudiantes y las la, la separaciones de las familias. So uh, once again tomorrow uh, we'll be uh, meeting with Valerie Jarrett in order to see a, a final answer on whether or not the administration will uh, stop the deportations of Dream Act students such as ourselves and stop the separation of families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. So uh, this definitely has been a long journey for us. Uh, it, well, it started on January 1st and it's not gonna end. It has not ended on May 1st. It's not gonna end today. It's not gonna end tomorrow. This is a long journey to justice, to justice for immigrants. Uh, the executive action is only a first step. What we really need is an immigration reform. What we really need is Dream Act. We need legislation that could solve this problem. But meanwhile, we need action and we can't wait. We can't wait until another child loses their father, their mother. We can't wait until another young person loses hope. We cannot wait anymore and we will not wait anymore. Uh, we're here to fight. Uh, we're freedom fighters, we're going to continue fighting. 
Um, that's what took us to walk all the way here and took us to go all the way to Arizona. And uh, just recently I was looking at some of the statistics and it just comes to show of how angry our community is with the administration at this point. Uh, when he was first, when Obama was first elected, about over 70% of uh, the Latino Hispanic community considered him to be good for the, for, for the country, and now only 50 something percent, 52 percent, views that, he, that he's uh, aligned with, the, with what we want. Uh, there were many promises made in 2008, and we're still waiting for change, and the change has not come. But one thing that I think that we have to all learn from previous movements is that it, change never comes from, from politicians. Change comes from people. Change, change comes from conversations in the coffee shops. Change comes, you know, when a group full of young people like here, you know, will take on the challenge of tomorrow, take on the challenge of today. Básicamente lo que quería decir en español es que Esa fue una gran jornada, empezamos el primero de enero, pero tampoco terminamos el primero de mayo, no vamos a terminar ahora. Vamos a seguir luchando, esa es una gran lucha. Uh, la, la acción ejecutiva es solamente un principio, un paso, hasta justicia para todos los inmigrantes. Lo que necesitamos es una migración, una, uh, una, una reforma migratoria, un, un, que el DREAM Act también puede pasar. Y, Pero el primer paso es que el presidente Obama pare con, pa, pare con las deportaciones ahora y también pare con, con, la, con de, la separación de familias. Nosotros somos jóvenes, no podemos esperar más ningún día. Uh, yo llegué cuando tenía 14 años, cuando, me, cuando llegué a mi graduar de Miami Dade College, llegué a ser el, primer, uh, fui el, prim, eh, el mejor estudiante de todo el estado de la Florida. Y en este momento uno piensa, bueno, ahora sí, ahora puedo hacer lo que sea, pero no fue el caso para mí porque no tenía un papel, un papel que me podía decir que yo soy un ser humano. Uh, entonces, básicamente, otra vez, uh, para que sepan, mañana vamos a estarnos reuniendo con Valerie Jared. Tomorrow we're going to be meeting with Valerie Jared. Vamos a tener un resultado. Una, uh, llegamos aquí, preguntamos a ella si podía parar con las, las aportaciones. Y nos, ella nos dijo que nos iba a decir un mes después, o sea que es mañana. And uh, on Tuesday, we're going to have a, a press conference in Miami, which all of you are invited, <laughs> even though you live in Washington. And uh, uh, en martes vamos a tener una otra conferencia de prensa en Miami para contar lo que pasó. Uh, and uh, for those who want to get involved, you can go to trail2010.org. That's where the pictures are from, uh, trail2010.org. Tomorrow we're going to be having, a, a right before the meeting, a, a little a fundraiser at a Buzz, Buzz Boy and Poets at 5th and K. Um, y mañana, para los que quieren estar con nosotros, pueden ir a trail2010.org. Uh, es bien fácil. Es donde las fotos están. Mañana vamos a tener un, una reunión para levantar fondos uh, en uh, Buzz Boy and Poets. If you want to get involved through your cell phone, you, all you have to do is text TRAIL to 30644, TRAIL to 30644, or uh, CAMINO AL 30644. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're going to be here for the media, for uh, if the media wants to have some one-on-ones with us right here. And uh, muchas gracias por tu tiempo. Vamos a estar aquí para si los medios quieren hablar con nosotros aquí uno a uno. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I mean, we can do some Q&A, too. Una, una cuestión rápida nomás. Eh, ustedes continúan dando la otra mejilla. Eh, están marchando, están eh, 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 haciendo que la gente vote, pero sigue habiendo la mano dura. El Partido Obama ha enviado tropas a la frontera. Eh, eh, los, los demócratas han una ley muy dura. Los republicanos quieren que golpeen más al inmigrante. ¿Qué está fallando? ¿Están apoyando a los empresarios? ¿Están apoyando todas estas reformas? ¿Qué pasa con el liderazgo? O sea, ¿qué, qué, ¿Cuál es el problema? El Tea Party es tan poderoso que, que la gente no puede eh, aprobar una reforma migratoria. No creo que sean tan poderosos. Lo que falta es eh, el coraje para el liderazgo para el cambio. Necesitamos que Obama ahora pare con las deportaciones. Por mucho tiempo solamente vimos cosas negativas en contra de los inmigrantes y ya es tiempo. 
somos muchísimos, más de 12 millones, somos cuantos hispanos por todo el país, 40 millones, o sea que tenemos el poder, tenemos que usar nuestro poder para hablar y para decir a, a, a ellos que paren con, con, con la persecución de en contra de inmigrantes. Quiero, quiero agregar eso. Um, yo creo que lo que pasa... Creo que lo que mucho tiempo pasa es que eh, los, los políticos piensan que los latinos no salen a votar. Y por eso es que de verdad no, no tienen mucho interés en los temas políticos eh, con el, cuando viene a, a inmigración, cuando viene a, a, a temas relacionados a, con los latinos. Porque necesariamente no piensan que los latinos salen a votar. ¿Por qué, por qué van a...? Eh, y, y por eso, eso es una de las razones por cual muchas veces no les importa. Y nosotros tenemos que continuar eh, eh, en nuestras comunidades registrando votantes para que salgan a votar, para que estos políticos cambien sus posiciones. Muchas gracias. So, Shirley has a question. Oh, this one, uh The time uh, yeah, for the fundraiser? It's from 12 to 1. 12 to 1? Yes, 12 to 1 for the fundraiser. Any other questions? No? Okay, so thank you so much for your time. And we're going to be right here for the meeting.